Um, gosh, Nicholas is super creative. He's an amazing designer. Um, but what I really love about him is that he wants to share his knowledge with other designers. Um, what I mean by that is he came to us and said that he's been having a ton of success with Google Slides um, and that he wanted to share that with you guys. And so we are just so glad to have him. We're super thankful for him um, being a part of our designer council. Um, and I've got to say, if you don't follow him on Instagram, um, you need to, because he always has the most amazing lighting inspiration. And it makes me realize that I, I need to replace every light picture. <laughs> <laughs> but Nicholas, to start, would you mind just kind of giving everybody here a, a a little bit of background on yourself, your business, and kind of how you got into the design industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first and foremost, just thanks to everybody at Monogram for putting these together. I think it's really crucial to have industry partners that are really trying to elevate the conversation and 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 provide as much information for everybody out there to navigate these really strange times and the ever changing and ever evolving um, design industry that we're living through right now. So. Um, a little bit about me and my firm. Um, I started my namesake firm, Nicholas Moriarty Interiors, back in 2008 um, during the start of the Great Recession. Um, so COVID-19 is kind of really novel to me. It's like, great, this again. Um, and so, you know, we've uh, been in existence for 12 years now, and um, we're a small boutique firm. There's only three of us in the office. Uh, we focus exclusively on luxury residential, uh, and we specifically target those full scope gut renovation type projects, whether they're ground up or existing condition type projects. Um, we work in a contemporary, uh, an, excuse me, an eclectic contemporary and modern vernacular. Um, and we're really known for honing in on our clients' aesthetics and creating beautiful lived in spaces that represent, you know, the life experience of our clients. Um, we're also very proud to partner with a lot of national brands. We do a lot of consulting on the product side of things, Monogram being one of them and one of our favorite. Um, their ethos just really is in line with our company's ethos. So we really love that. Um, and we've worked nationally too. So, you know, we've done projects from Alaska to Seattle to um, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington, DC, and South Carolina. So, you know, for us, this whole idea of virtual is really something that we've kind of already done. Um, and as a as a firm that has, you know, a fairly young existence in the industry, we've always looked for ways to be different, more efficient, um, more environmentally friendly by being, you know, paper free, etc. So I, I don't know anything about existing in the virtual space other than what works for us. And so what I would love to be able to instill in the conversation today and, in, and to impart wisdom um, to anybody that's listening today is just what works for us and what we've found to be successful. And hopefully you can take some nuggets away from this and, and implement it into your practice and, and hopefully improve the efficiency standard, or if anything, just improve the interactive nature within which you can you can you know interface with your clients during during this extremely strange and annoying time. So that's perfect, and that's a perfect perfect leeway into kind of uh, where we want to start our discussion. So, and um, what did your typical engagement look like? Let's kind of call it pre-crisis time yeah. frame. Yeah, so we, we have a really linear um, way in which we approach all of our projects. So it starts out probably like all of your projects do, where we do a lot of mining of information at the outset. So we're doing a lot of financial mining for budget developments. We're doing a lot of visual mining for aesthetic direction, all of those things. Um, we roll into our plan developments and space planning and furniture planning and architectural planning, all of those things. Um, and what's really been the difference is how we interface when it comes to actual selections and things like that, right? It used to be that we would have our digital mood boards prepared and we would have meetings with our clients and we would we would very dynamically fly through all those digital mood boards with our clients in person with them right and when we were looking at material selections and things of that nature we would come with our our you know assemblage of materials and do touch and feel and and things of that nature and and, and really focus on you know what the client was responding to in that very specific interaction um, and that all gets distilled from macro to micro, um, probably just like everybody else does. Um, and so what we've had to do, as all of you have had to do, is just figure out how we can change that so that it still has an efficiency standard, if there even is one to have, um, and how it can still have some engagement and interaction. 
Um, and that's where the biggest shift has come for us. So it's it's different, but it's not as different as, as what we were working with before. Awesome. And you kind of answered this a bit, but how has your process translated virtually? I know that you mentioned that you've had clients from all over. So it sounds like in some capacity, you've had some virtual interaction, I guess, even if it is just by phone or FaceTime. But yes. how has that process now changed um, now that we're kind of in the situation that we are? Yeah, so I think the, the biggest change is the extra time that we're spending on everything. And so um, there's a tremendous amount of time being spent on the front end expectation setting, right? Um, and just letting clients know from the inception that everything is going to take exponentially longer, right? Um, whether it's developing the mood boards or developing the material palettes or whatever it is, there's a tremendous amount of that that has to happen um, just at the outset. Then it translates to, um, you know, um, interfacing with the clients uh, in a different way digitally. So before we had an application on our iPads that allowed us to prepare all of our digital mood boards and that was very dynamic. The clients could move things around, they could pinch and scroll and whatnot. Um, and just in the work that we've done in the past with our graphic designers, um, we've always used Google Slides as the interface with them on whatever we were doing. And so for us, it was a light bulb moment to say, hey, this actually has the same dynamic nature as what we were doing with our iPad applications for our digital mood boards in the past. So we can just directly roll this into and translate this to, um, to our new um, uh, uh, way of having to work. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's actually been interesting. And it's also um, uh, built in some new efficiencies for us. So while we're spending more time maybe labeling things after the fact or getting duplicate sample sets put together or dealing with lag times on shipping and, and sampling and, and things of that nature, one of the things that we have found is these meetings that we're having with clients have actually increased in their efficiency because with what we're using and how we're using the Google Slides, we have actually been able to capture more information. We've actually been able to have just as much interaction and interface and in some ways even have more. So, so we're, we're excited about what this is doing for us, it's still allowing us to engage with the clients in a, in a very dynamic way. So it feels as though we're in the same space working. We're not all just, you know, on this two dimensional screen. Um, so so that's been nice, right? It's definitively different. It's definitively more, um, uh, more inefficient, but we are finding a little nuance of efficiency that comes through the back end of these meetings and things like that. So it's it's all different, all the same, all crazy, all annoying, all fun, all exciting, all of the things. So. What the punches, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I know that expectation setting has always been really important to you and your business. Yeah. Do you feel like this is taking a whole new level of expectation setting with things that are in your control, but there's also a lot that's totally out of your control? Yeah, I think, you know, what we're seeing right now is that the industry has kind of been able to ride on the coattails of what existed before COVID. And now we're seeing that this is all set in and we're not sure how long this is going to exist for. So we're really having to assure clients, especially new clients, that our processes, our processes and our procedures and the industry itself are going to be able to sustain this, right? And so that it's twofold. It's one, it's saying <clears throat> it's gonna take us a little longer to put things together because we're, we're having to be a little bit more, um, uh, you know, put more information into the documents that you're getting at the outset, right? It's going to take a little bit longer to, to, to go through in a meeting because we're not in the same place. So there may be some, you know, lag in how we're pointing things out to each other and, and things of that nature. And then the sampling is where we're seeing the really big issue, right? So, you know, we've, we see companies are out of samples. We see that, you know, we had to do a big pull of Kovdrat samples, Maharm Kovdrat samples, and it took a week just for them to acknowledge the order because they had some malware issue and then it's another week of getting the sample sent that I need to review and then I've got to get a duplicate set of samples right so that's three additional weeks on textile selection just for furniture and it's you know we, we really just have to couch the front and back end of these conversations and saying this is what our ideal looks like um, but this is what the reality looks like and um, by and large, we found that people are understanding of that, but they're understanding of it because we're not over promising and, and we're making it very clear to clients that we are not going to over promise. Um, and then to take it a step further, which is a little bit outside of this conversation, but I think is still relevant, 
um, you know, touch base with your vendors and things like that. And <clears throat> we're lucky to work with an accounting firm that specializes in interiors, and they're actually implementing um, a credit agency, an outside credit agency, to rate the credit worthiness of vendors that we work with. And so, you know, it's all these extra levels of precaution that we're having to take to make sure that our clients' financial investments vis-a-vis -vis their, you know, projects are being tended to, um, and they're not going to be left with, you know, their ass in their hand uh, because somebody went out of business, right? Um, so it's it's all of the things. It's it's the outset saying, you know, it would normally take us two weeks to get you a proposal. Maybe it's going to take us three weeks. It would normally take us three weeks to get you a full set of plans. Maybe it's going to take us five weeks now. You know, mood board reviews, textile reviews, all that stuff. It's just going to take longer. Um, and the more that you want to have control over that, the longer it's going to take, right? If you're bringing all the samples to your office first and then sending out duplicate packages, that adds a whole nother week that normally wouldn't be there. So um, getting a fundamental understanding of how your firm has to shift to make it work for you is tantamount to making sure that that expectation setting and that scheduling is going to really be efficacious for you and your client um, because we all have enough stress on our plate. We don't need to add to it by overpromising right now. Yeah, it's almost like expectation setting for yourself and your firm before you then even communicate that out so setting your own realistic expectations that things are shifting and then how can I properly communicate that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, when you get into the type of work that we do when you're doing um, full gut renovation project, right, we then have the extra level um, on top of that that we have to be conscious of tradespeople and who wants to be in there at what time and how many people are willing to be there at any given time and and things of that nature so we just went through a really interesting experience with our glass installer they have somebody who's immunocompromised right so we had to have them come in on a saturday um, with nobody else around and uh, things of that nature so it's it's a lot to juggle um and i just really stress uh and press upon everybody who's attending to to really make sure that you're sitting down and you're having an honest conversation with yourself um, and your clients can either get it or get off the ship. You know, it's like, it's, just don't bring that negativity and that ex, that like external egregiously out of touch with reality, you know, yeah. yes into your life right now. It's not worth it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Well, let's jump in then. Um, can you kind of show us and take us through a couple examples of actually using this interactive call and what that looks like for you and your clients? Yeah, so for the sake of our conversation here, Elise and Alex are going to act as our clients. And what I'm going to show you guys is how we've been doing um, our interactive meetings from um, when we start with our visual listening activities all the way through initial um, selections and then down to the final um the final selections, right? And so, again, this is something that we've always done digitally. Now we just have to do it digitally and virtually, which is um, a little crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen, and then you guys will see my screen, and then you'll just see the um, Elise and Alex um, interfacing with this as well. So. Um, so hopefully everybody can see my screen. So what we have here is the back end of Google Slide. Um, and this, this, this program is really easy to use. So if anybody has been developing mood boards um, and presentation packages in PowerPoint and or um, Photoshop or Illustrator in the past, um, you, you'll find that the interface of this is actually easier to use than those. It's very intuitive um, and it allows you to, to be really um, edit capable um, in a very efficacious way. So what, I, what I'm showing you here is a project. Hey, Nicholas, that we, yes. Can you start by saying, how do you get access? Is this a paid program that you have or is it really available to everybody? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So um, we actually do all of our um, web hosting and email is um, through Google. So we have a Google business account, um, which gives us full um, Google Drive access, but there are um, free versions of um, Google Slide. We, we, we pay a very, very minimal monthly fee for our, our Google, um, our Google um, business uh, um, uh, licensing, if you will. <clears throat> but I don't even know that you actually need that for this. If you have a if you have a Gmail account, for instance, you can you can have access to Google Slides, um, and you can share it with people outside of of Gmail as well, right? Um, so, for instance, these these slides were sent to Alex and and Elise's uh, monogram emails, and then they've just logged in through their own personal emails um, with Google, and and they now have full edit capabilities of this as well. So. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. 
Yeah, no, that's a great thing. So essentially, you know, this is all cloud based. So, you know, when I set it up to share here, I just enter people's email addresses. I can give them the capacity to to edit, to comment, to just view, and all of that is, is all right there for them to to do. So, so what what we do with this? Um, uh, at the outset is we, we've we gone through our, our space planning exercises and things like that. So our plans are now dropped into this space. Um, this is a this is a project that we actually signed right as COVID started. These clients are in New York um, and they're actually moving to Chicago. And so we've never actually met. Um, and so um, they we've been truly doing this all 100% virtually. And this is just, it's been an exercise um, in really getting to figure all this stuff out in a very interesting way. And so, what we do is we enter our plans in at the outset so they can see all the furniture um, that we have. You can go into a presentation mode uh, so that it's full screen if you just want to be able to talk them through what's happening in your plans uh, and etc. And then we go into what I think is the really beautiful interactive part of this. So if we click over to our second slide, this is indicative of what we do when we're doing our visual listening. So if you go back to our plans, we've got all of these furniture pieces that we need to select items for. So as we do our visual listening, we're into these programs and we're pulling up options that meet the client's aesthetic that they may or may not be interested in. So what's great about this is right now you can see me clicking on things, but if Alex and Elise go into this slide as well, if they're on slide two, What's great about this is they can actually pull up an image themselves um, and it can pinpoint something that they wanna look at. So right now you have both Elise and Alex interfacing with this program and they can move things around. And so either one of them can say to me that they want to see something and they want to see that it's that it's bigger or whatever, right? And so we can dynamically have this conversation in real time about you know, a piece. And instead of having to have a ton of slides open and a ton of websites open, we can do it all right here, right? Um, so that we can all be having a conversation about whatever it is that, that they wanna be seeing um, at any given time, right? And it's very easy to edit this stuff back, um, uh, et cetera, to go back down. Um, the great thing about this as well is the editing capabilities of it are very easy. So if I want all of these things to face a certain way, I just hit format. I can go to size and rotation. Um, I click on this again. I want this work now. And I can flip this around, right? So the editing capabilities of this are really easy. Um, we, we log all of our product on Pinterest on secret boards, right? So we just pull up the images as we have them of things that we want to bring into the space for, the, for these mood boards. And this is something that I could have my junior designer being in this meeting with us as well. And as we're selecting things off or selecting things on that we like, one of the things that we can do is actually have her add in things as um, as we need, right? So she could be deleting things out. She could be, you know, adding things in to keep the conversation moving forward. So this is something that we've actually found has been really helpful in in, um, in just engaging with the client and making it fun and dynamic and all of those things, right? Um, so it's extremely easy, it's very straightforward, it's very intuitive. So then we continue to take this down to, you know, find out some final selections. Um, this is where we landed going back to, you know, the, the original floor plan that we had um, and then going down to what our final selections were, including, you know, having, you know, tags added into this. Um, we ended up doing a sofa selection because we decided that this, you know, this soap and chaise wasn't going to work for them functionally. And so that's how we landed on this. Uh, the great thing about this is we just keep adding information in as we go along. At any point as we're in this, I can add a note to Elise and them that they'll be able to see and say, how is this looking, right? Um, uh, type of thing, right? So it, it, there's tons of dynamic applications here that you can use uh, taking notes right in this space. So we can say client approved everything, right? Send a DL, right? So this designer link is our, is our software. So at that point, you know, my junior, I could put in here RH, that's my junior. I could say client approved everything, send a DL. And then she knows to go in and add every single one of these things to our order procurement um, software. And we can start moving on that. 
So this is really great. This is really dynamic. We found that this gives us that interface that we were missing with our clients of not being able to see them in person, right? So instead of them touching my iPad and scrolling on my iPad, you know, now they're touching their own monitor and we're still able to have those interactions, right? Um, when you have this share capacity, you can then, you know, give your client a, a perpetual um, view into this if you want. You can take out their ability to see it right after the meeting's over. So you can have as much control over this as you want uh, uh, as you want as well again pulling it into a presentation situation so you can you know more aptly just walk them through so they're not able to to um, edit anything in real space and then what we have gotten to now with our materials is we're just sending out materials to our clients um, in real time um, and um, sending them duplicates and then saying okay Here's, here's the samples that you need to put together. Here's how we want you to lay them out. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna come into this meeting again. You know, we, we, we like to do our meetings over Zoom. There's a little bit more um, interaction there with being able to see yourself and whatnot. But, you know, we also then have FaceTime pulled up so that we can be FaceTiming textiles and things like that and then showing them these things in real time. And so we're giving the client as much guidance as we possibly can so that they can set up the meeting in advance as much as we would set up the meeting in advance, right? So we have three pieces of upholstered furniture that need to be selected um, and, and upholstery needs to be approved for those places or for those pieces. So everything's right here um, for them. They can lay it out with the other, you know, materials, our wall coverings, our stones for that space, et cetera. Um, and we've, we've found that this keeps it really linear. Um, and again, the dynamic nature of it is, is really fantastic. This can all also be immediately exported. So if you hit file, you hit download, PDF, um, I can automatically save this entire presentation to a PDF. Um, and as soon as this is complete, I'll show you guys what that looks like. So immediately post the, the meeting with your client, you could have everything revised and edited right in real time. Um, and then the minute that this slowly downloads the PDF, you could send in a recap right away, right? So even if you take away the client's ability to interface with this, um, you know, it's really quick to send them that little PDF um, document um, right there. And so everything, you know, that we had just looked at is, is immediately PDF'd into a wonderful presentation package for them. Um, and it took no time at all to do that, um, which is great. So, Nicholas, so that's how much do you send them prior to your meeting or are you presenting all of this kind of real time and then sending it all as a follow up? Yes. I know you're yeah. sending them materials and whatnot prior. Yeah, real time. So we don't like our clients to see anything before we've talked to them about it. And so um, I'm a control freak and um, they need to see things for the first time with my voice. Right. So so, you know, we we'll, we send them we always we always take away their ability to edit these right after we've presented, right? And so um, we send the links to edit again right before the meeting starts, right along when we're sending our, our Zoom or our um, office meeting or whatever it is, uh, and the clients log in, we're all on the same page as it starts, they're seeing it with fresh eyes, um, we're talking them through that, the exception obviously being the materials, right? And we, we're just at the point where we're not gonna dick around with waiting for all the materials to come to us and then putting together sample boxes and then sending out the sample box, right? We're just sending everything to them and we're saying, just open it and set it aside and don't look at it. And then when we give you these slides and these materials, typically what we'll have is actually a, a, a tag underneath these um, pictures that says what all of these items are. Um, and so that's then the cue for the client. You know, this is how they want us to put this together. And then we're going to talk through these items in real time. Cool. Okay. That's helpful. And anyone too on, um, on the call, be sure to send in your questions via the chat button. Um, that looks like a little text bubble box. So. Elise, just Elise and Nicholas, just one quick question here. Um, so you mentioned samples, Nicholas. Do you use yeah. Material Bank for your samples, or what's the best approach that you guys use? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So I, um, again, as I mentioned, I do a lot of consulting work, and so I was really fortunate to be one of the beta testers of Material Bank. I, um, Laura Romanoff, who helped um, start that um, with Adam Sandow, uh, she and I are very good friends, and um, we really. Uh, 
felt so strongly about the idea of that entity and and have used it since inception really um if anybody does not know about material bank you should look into it i do believe they have shut down enrollment for the time being but i could be wrong about that they might have opened it back up i think what they were doing is with the amount of people that already were on the platform they were trying to service th those people first and foremost given the fact that they've had to sh they've had to shed a little bit of their efficiency and their capacity at their um at their warehouse to to deal with covid standards um but essentially what material bank is it's an online database actually i can show you um why don't i just show you um and really quickly too make sure you mention how much it costs for designers because that's important. yes so material bank is free so material bank is free for designers um it's a fantastic platform um and so what you what you do is if you're looking for a textile um and i want it to be trevera right um so you can get as much specificity on this as you want, right? So it's going to start to pull up Pollock and Jab and Fabtex and all these things. Um, you can search it by color. So I want it to be black or um, and blue, um, or whatever it is, and it's going to pull options for you, right? And then you know you save these things to to um, a mood board. So I'm going to create a mood board and I'm going to say Ainsfield Textiles. Um, Right. And then, you know, we just ordered some some paint for these clients. Right. And so when I go into my boards, I, I click on paint and these are all the paint samples that we needed to review for for their project. Um, and then I just I just hit order all and it brings up this population of all of these things. And then um, I, you know, just continue to follow it through and it'll send them to wherever I need to. The, the great thing about this is that there's. Um, so much on here as far as textiles and paint samples and things like that are concerned. And um, what this does is if you get this in by, I think it's 10 p.m. at night, you get the, uh, or midnight, I think it's you get it in by midnight, you get it FedEx the next day by 10 a.m. So this material bank is a game changer from that standpoint. They get things to you faster than anybody else. Um, and uh, it's not, there's, you know, it's, it's not all brands. So if you click on the brands, there's a lot here, but there's still a lot that's missing, right? So we use Holly Hunt a lot. You know, Holly Hunt is not on this list, but Holly Hunt has also been with, and Philip Jeffries for that instance, uh, for that matter, they've been really great about getting samples to us extremely fast, right? So, uh, Material Bank has just been knocking out of the park from that capacity. You know, we've been really focusing on our vendors that are doing a great job of getting us, um, you know, materials. We're about to place a giant Philip Jeffries order, A, because they kept their entire staff on and they're really committed to, to seeing their, their company and their employees through during this crazy time. And B, you know, they're really being a team player and making sure that they're getting sampling and stuff like that out to us fast. So, so, you know, these are all the nuances, like I was talking about before, of of having to preemptively look at the inefficiencies and things like that. You know, all of these, if I go back to this mood board, you know, all of these furniture pieces that we're looking at for this Ainsfield project, these are all European vendors and most of them have graded in textiles. A lot of these graded in textiles are cob dry, which we love. We have a huge library of that material in our office, but we don't have everything. And so, you know, it's taken two weeks now to get these samples and that's just adding in annoyances. So, you know, anything that you guys can do and find to to, to curb those things is I think really important. So that's a great thing. Nicholas, one, one more question, Nicholas. The actual, the name of this program you're walking us through on Google, is there an actual name for it? Yes, it's called Google Slide. And um, they also have, um, let me just click into this as well, because there's also, um, um, yeah, so it's just called Slides or Google Slides. <clears throat> but there is also like iPad versions of this, right? So actually right now, um, if I click over to, which one am I on here? And really quickly, while Nicholas is doing that, um, we've gotten a couple of messages about people not being able to write in the chat box. Sorry about that. So just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask Nicholas and Elise a question if there is one, please. So you guys, I'm actually on my iPad right now um, and I am um, editing this on my iPad as we speak, right? So it's, 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 it's all super easy interface. And again, like, uh, you know, I'm not paid by Google. I have no affiliation to Google other than I absolutely cannot stand inefficiency. And so this has just been the fastest way for us to continue to operate like we have in the past um, and to some degree even better. Right. So, um, yeah.
That's awesome. So can you give us just a couple examples? I know you've been really lucky that you've had some clients that have come in and you've been able to take them through this process. Can you just give us a couple examples, maybe one that's from nuts to bolts, you have only been virtual and maybe a client that you've transitioned to um, this virtual process that you were in the middle of? Yeah, exactly. So um, <clears throat> so what you don't see in this, because we stripped the Ainsfield presentation down, if you remember, I said that we signed this client right before um, right before COVID. And this project actually had, a, uh, it was a uh, developer rehab of a uh, 1920s um, single family home. So, uh, you know, it was a flat, fine blank slate, but we definitely came in and we've done a lot of interior architecture work on it as well, adding some paneling and things like that. So what you're not seeing in these slides right now is all the initial visual listening activities that we did for showing them panel directions and fireplace directions and things like that. So all of those layers uh, of this have, ha have been used in the same way as what I was doing when I was walking you through these visual listening activities of the furniture, right? Um, and so this has been a true test uh, of soup to nuts for us. So this is this project is much smaller in scope than we are typically doing. Um, and so you know we're not um, we're not having to do big construction document set reviews and things like that. But um, we do have existing projects that we've been working on for the better part of a year or over a year where we do have, and I'm going to click over to this, you know, this is an example of one of our construction document sets. And this is a project that we started back in 2018, actually, um, you know, and through 2019, we've, you know, taken all of our time to build out our construction document set and all this kind of stuff and lots of interfacing client meetings and whatnot. This entire kitchen gets beautiful monogram appliances. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is, this has been, you know, where we were. And so now going forward, we just have to make sure that these, these documents get printed in advance and sent to our clients as well, because this is all 24 by 36. And so clients can't, you know, print and process this on their own. Um, and then when we get down to, you know, the furniture stuff that you guys see in in these, we've had to edit from doing, you know, large format 11 by 17 that we would take to a presentation to making sure that everything's on eight and a half by 11. So it's easy and printable for, for clients now. Um, and then the, the construction document set that I just had pulled up, it's a perfect example of how we've transitioned. So we've now had to move to virtual meetings for this. And so finalizing the space plans and things of that nature with this client has have all been uh, done via, via Zoom meeting and whatnot. And so this shows us, um, sorry, this shows us our furniture plans, everything is tagged, et cetera, you know, and, and this is a client where, you know, we've had all these meetings and so now everything is just down to a tag item on it, right? This is a client we've done four projects with. So there's some of their old pieces that we're using plus some of our new pieces. Um, and it, it's really, again, the same process. You know, we had already looked at a lot of materials before, uh, but now we're showing them, you know, this, this, this entire spread of materials that are going into the project. So they have an overview of what this is since we're not schlepping these things and a lot of these materials were already approved so we're not going to waste the time in getting second sets and things like that because we're already into construction so the terracotta foyer tile for instance is already down um, and things of that nature so it's it's again Elise it's a it's really the same it's just it's just different right so um, we're, we're just finding that it's it's been a really efficient and, a, and an efficacious way a, a, of of managing all of this with our clients that's cool so do you feel like any of this process, will you continue it um, once all of this is long and over? Um, do you think you'll incorporate some of these kind of, what word am I looking for, these slides of uh, these this presentations to go virtually? Have you seen yes. the Yes, and I'm trying to find it. We should have, <clears throat> maybe I deleted them out, but in the, um, oh no, I know where it is. It's in here. Um, so one of the things that we've actually what we're actually using here is as we get through approvals and things like that, we're actually then taking notes right in <clears throat> in these documents as well. So so as we're looking through, you know, before there was uh, you know visual listening uh, mood boards to get to these chairs right and to get to the sofa, um, and then these things were approved, and so uh, now we're adding those notes in as well. So again, you know, my my junior or my senior designer, they can come into this right away as soon as a meeting is done and they're seeing those notes in real time. And that's an efficiency standard that we didn't have before. That's something that we weren't 
doing, right? So then it was like handwritten notes from the meeting or typed notes in our OneNote document on our iPad that then people are going to multiple places to see. And this is actually tailored and forced us to to, to, to think differently and to put all that information in one place. Uh, mm -hmm. And I love that. That's that's an unexpected thing that's that's been a that's been a full shift for us. Like we're not going back from that. Like that's always gonna be in in line for us now. And then, you know, in our year end review with our accounting firm, we track all of our time very specifically. Every every minute gets tracked, right? Including travel time that we're not billing clients for. And so we, in our review at the end of last year and looking at um, the amount of time that we spend traveling, you know, it's crazy how much unbillable time we have that that we're not able to, to, to capitalize on and to monetize. Um, and so the great thing about this is we used to be beholden to seeing our clients in person for our, our mood board presentations because we did them on iPads and, and we needed that, that interface. And now I'm saying to hell with that. And like all of our presentations for visual listening and things like that are going to be virtual because I don't need to waste an hour of non-billable time getting to my client's house because that's what's comfortable and preferable for them to review these things when we can do it virtually, right? So that's one more hour of my day that I'm recouping that I'm hopefully going to be able to bill back to a project, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's another efficiency standard that we're seeing that we're liking that we're going to continue using regardless of what happens with this lockdown. That's good. I like good that's coming out of this. Yeah, making me more money, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, it looks like we have a couple of questions that are coming in. Um, Alex, can you read some of those? Yeah, you got it. Um, so the first one, Nicholas, is how did you create the sample board you just showed? Um, so it's it, uh, it's as easy as you start with a blank slide. We have added in our logo. So our logo is not entirely editable, um, but um, I think it's actually an easy logo. It's not editable. So in, in this case, our logo is actually embedded into the slide and then it's just a duplicate slide. So it's just a feature within Google Slide that you, that you can or cannot use if you don't want to, right? Uh, other than that, it's just a standard template. It's just a blank page. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all that it is. Okay, and Wendy, yeah, the mood boards were done on Google Slides as well. Correct. Um, yeah. Okay, and then the next one, um, it said she says it looks great. How do you show and share these documents on your computer to the client they are looking at Google? Hold on a second, let me just show more. When they are looking at Google Slides, also you send to client as a PDF? Question mark. No, you. So I'll actually walk you through this. So what you do okay. is you actually. I'm just gonna copy. Oh, I've already got Alex's email copy. Okay. So <clears throat> you actually share this as, um, uh, as the Google document. So it, it, what you do is when you put in, actually, give me just a second here. I'm going to, Good question. I'm going to take Alex out. So I just deleted Alex out of this. So I'm going to save the changes and I'm just going to invite her again. So I'm going to go back to the share function. I paste Alex's email address, and then I have the ability to send it to her to edit, to comment, or to view. It doesn't matter. If you want your client to engage the way we like our client to engage, to be able to select something, to move it around, to change the size of it, that's how you do that, right? Um, you want them to edit, send it to them, and then you can send it as an invitation, which requires that they sign in um, to, to the account, or you can send it as a link, um, and turning on the sharing link uh, will allow anybody to view it. They won't be able to edit it, but they can view it. So if somebody is, you know, if you have an older client that's a little bit more technologically challenged, you can still do it that way. But then once that's shared, um, you know, it, maybe Elise wants to share her screen or Alex wants to share her screen with somebody because then you, you'll see that, um, you know, this is then the, um, it's the same interface then. So exactly. Elise or Alex wants to share theirs. Um, because then what you're seeing is it's the exact same interface for for the for the client as well. Does that clarify? Did that clarify? Yes. And then also too, um, when I had asked about how did you create the sample board um, that you just showed, she meant the terracotta tile one. Oh, got you. Okay, so let me share my screen again. Okay, so 
This is just a quick snapshot from my phone. Um, and this is literally just inserting an image from um, my computer. Um, and you can, if I go back to um, clients, this is all under monogram, mood board presentations. Um, so these are just the, the images that I had taken um, off of my phone, uploaded to our Dropbox, and then dropped in and edited um, just like I would anything else. Yeah. So this is an example where your presentation started prior to this situation. So you're just uploading. Correct. Pictures, so you don't have to duplicate work. Correct. Yep. Correct. Yep. 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 And then even with this one, it was the same thing. Like these are textiles and materials that we just pulled yesterday. And so these images have been um, ha have been pulled together um, so that, um, you know, we have a guide for our clients when we talk about these things on the phone next. Right. And so these are just quick snapshots taken from my phone, uploaded to Dropbox and then inserted right into the document. Awesome. Alex, was were there any other questions? Um, can some can some sample from Material Bank be taken and added to the mood board on Google Slide? Yep. So essentially, what you're doing is if you go back, let me just go back a few pages here. So anything that you can um, copy an image of, right, can immediately be added into Google Slide, right? So. I want to just to add that image. It's it's literally that simple. So this is also one of the things where, um, and this is a great segue because this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, bad vendor partners, right? So it, this is, it, if anything, this shows us more so than ever before that vendors have to get on board with having high quality images of their product that are savable, pinnable, et cetera, right? Because the last thing that I have is time to download and upload and all that kind of crap. I need to be able to go back and forth very quickly. That's why we, you know, we have all of our stuff in Pinterest, right? Like if, if I'm saving this to a private board, the, the clients can't see any of this, you know, but I can then, you know, pull up any of these things, um, that I need to, I can copy this very quickly. I can drop it into this um, presentation. You know, we're gonna do an alternate on. Um, oops, I just copied the new board, sorry. Um, right, and then it's there. So, you know, this is, it, 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 all of these things, the ability to be on a vendor's website and copy and paste these things, the ability to be, you know, um, on a Pinterest or a vendor website and be able to copy and paste these things. This is extremely important to us and to, you know, the future of how we're going to have to do this, you know, for God knows how long, right? And the only thing I'll add to Nicholas is, um, Monogram is not on there yet today. We're in the talks of being added on there, especially with our brass accents. Um, a little uh, palette of that. But if you go to your, if you look in here, if you could go to cafe, you can see our cafe line on there though, cafe appliances, just to show them because if we're talking appliances. So our other, <laughs> our other brand is on here. Some more FYI. Yeah. Yep. And then if you click on one of them, you can pick, because you know, we offer different colors and different finishes for the cafe. So um, yeah, there you go down below. So this is the same thing, right? If I need a sample of the matte yeah. black, I can add this to my sample. It's going to ask me, you know, um, uh, to add to my tray if I want, but you have to pick a project name first, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, or I can save this, I can save this to my mood boards if it's a monogram. Um, right. So there's tons of ways to do this, but that's a great example, um, Alex. And again, I, if I'm adding this into this project, you know, we copy and paste this wherever it needs to go, right? So adding this into there. That's what I like to see, appliances in the mood board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we specified all of our monogram for this project well before we needed to start doing these, these so they're not in here for right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what is the iPad version I'm being asked or being asked? Yeah, so um, if I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop. 
um, and kind of bootleg turn this around um, so that everybody can see it. So <clears throat> it's essentially the exact same user interface. It's just a little bit different. So um, you get, I don't know how easily this comes across on a, on a screen share. But so it's exactly the same thing. Um, if, you, if you click on an item, the first time that you click on it, it allows you to bring it to you know, the front, the back, whatever. Um, and then you know, same thing here. You just grab the um, item, and then you can change the size and, and whatnot. So it's the exact same interface, just a little bit different. So when we had those digital move boards in the past that we would use, we're actually just changing from that application, which doesn't even exist anymore, to this now, because it's essentially the same thing that we were doing before. Awesome. Is there any other technology that you are thinking about investing in for your business? I mean. Yeah, so I think, you know, for us, uh, a lot of this has been about not bringing on extra expense and just thinking about what's existing that can work for us. And so that's where we're at with this. But I will say if there's anybody in the audience that does a lot of construction like we do um, and you have these crazy um, you know, really long construction document sets. There is an app that we use that is fantastic that's called Plan Grid. So Plan, P L A N G R I D, Plan Grid. Um, <clears throat> and this is essentially a project management um, uh, app that. Uh, is really geared towards construction documents. It's used heavily in the construction industry, especially um, for you know big commercial projects and things like that. So what we do is we upload our PDF of our construction document, our 100% CD set. And then as we're on job sites, we can add photos of discrepancies or if there's like something that needs to be changed or we have to send an RFQ out or we have to send a change order out or whatever. Um, there's a lot of robust interaction that can happen on that. Uh, and it's another way of just adding a layer of efficiency. So if you can't get everybody on site, but you want everybody to be on the same page, um, it's great. I will say it's hard to get general contractors to use that um, because then they have to have a dedicated iPad for the job site and whatnot. But we find that for our team, it's good. And we're, it's something that we kind of shied away from um, that we're going to start coming back to big time on our construction projects because it's, it's just another way that, you know, forcing yourself to be digital is really important. Um, and I think it's, it's just something that we're just going to get more in a rhythm of using. And I, I truly believe in that app. I think it's really fantastic. It's the best one out there that I know of. Um, I think it's been around the longest too. So it's, it's quite good. Um, beyond that, one of the things that oddly enough, we've been in um, talks about, you know, so we have a branding PR firm that we work with and um, we're going to, we were going to start getting into video pretty heavily at the end of this year. I think we're just pushing it out a little bit, but we were going to start doing uh, virtual walkthroughs of projects. But one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, the, the cost of VR technology is really, is really coming down. And so this is something that we're considering using going forward on construction projects as well, where we don't actually have to have clients on job sites. We can just send them VR or ask them to purchase some specific VR type thing, you know, as just a, like a basis of the construction fee essentially for the project. And that way we can walk them through things on site in a more safe uh, manner, right? So the clients aren't having to be on site when tradespeople are on site or we're not having to stop work to clear out a job site because the clients are going to be on site, um, et cetera. So VR is something that I would definitely suggest people start looking into as well. I think that's you're going to see a lot of that take hold in the next um, year big time, I think. And hopefully you'll see some some uh, hardware companies come out with some some more items that are that are a little bit more price friendly, right? Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, we are rounding out um, all your time. So I just want to send one more. more wow. One more reminder. Uh, if there's any more questions, send them into the chat feature. Um, but we end every session um, just kind of with one question to keep it fun. Um, but Nicholas, what is one thing that you have been using in excess? And what's one thing that you've eliminated um, during quarantine? It sounds like you've been working in excess, but besides that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, <clears throat> the thing that we've been using in excess is Slack. So just our, because we're not in the office together anymore, um, that inner office com 
communication is really important. And so um, we're going to start using that a lot more. Um, that and Asana, um, which is a uh, um, basically a to-do um, scheduling program. So those are going to be huge for us going forward. I think you know we've we've gone through personally so many transitions in the last year alone. We are a new PR branding firm. We hired a new accounting firm. We you know two years ago we redid all of our CAD standards. And so it's every year we're trying to find one chunk of information that we can improve on. And so inner office communication is the next one for us, especially given this situation. So um, so that's in huge. The one thing that I'm using less of, um, uh, patience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, it sounds funny, but you know, like I, I try to be a pretty copacetic person at baseline, but the the inefficiency standards are driving me insane. And I'm just going to be really blunt about that. I, I hate them. And um, I just want one hour in the merchandise mart to pull textiles. Like I, I, I I'm, excuse my French, but I fucking can't stand looking at a computer screen to look at textiles anymore. Um, I need to go see and feel and touch um, textiles again. So um you know, patience when it comes to materiality is the thing that I have lost all of. I, it's it's driving me insane. And if anybody wants to run a seminar on getting materials faster and sourcing materials virtually, please, because I would I would be game for that. I, I hate it right now. I think it's terrible. Yeah, engaging those senses again, I think, is what a lot of us are missing. I miss yeah. all of those. So awesome. My I can only speak for myself, but this has been awesome. I know I've learned a ton. I can think even in my role of just ways that I can incorporate and use the Google Slides and just some of those and being able to work together on one document as opposed to having all these different places. So thank you. Thanks for taking an hour out of your time to show yeah. us everything. Oh, I will say too, one of the things that I didn't mention is you, you can actually save Google Slides into PowerPoints. So if you typically work on PowerPoint, I don't, I don't know the extent of PowerPoint as far as um, working dynamically um, at the same time as other people, but uh, if you're you know, a team that's working on a presentation together and then you need to save it as PowerPoint, you can do that in slides as well, which is great, so. Oh, cool, because yeah, that's what I, I personally only use PowerPoint um, or have been, so that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again um, for everyone. We have recorded this session, so we um, will be posting it to our YouTube channel um, and sending that out so you can watch it on repeat because I know there's a lot of little nuances and tricks that Nicholas shared in there, but thank you so, so much, Nicholas. We really, really appreciate Never your time. Um, and to everyone, excited to see y'all next week and tomorrow uh, with the session with Chef John. So we will see you guys then. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Nicholas. Great job. Thank you.